Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I'm Dr. Yasmin Ahmed, and uh, today's our topic is about the control of uh, blood pressure. Previously, you have studied about the factors affecting the blood pressures, factor that determine the blood fa- uh, blood pressure, and what is blood pressure. You have previously read about it. So today's our topic is about the regulation of arterial blood pressure. Okay, there are some mechanism described for the regulation of BP. The first mechanism is the short term mechanism rapidly acting known as the nervous mechanism. Second one is the renal mechanism also known as long term regulatory mechanisms. We will go through in uh, minute, uh, minute details of these uh, mechanisms later on. And the third one is the hormonal mechanism. Fourth one is the local mechanism. So, as the name indicates, the first one is the short-term regulatory mechanisms. It's very rapid. It starts uh, from within few hours to few minutes to few hours. And uh, it's a nervous mechanism. So, we start by the first uh, first point, which, uh, which is the nervous mechanism for the regulation of blood pressure. In this, uh, uh, as I have just said you, that it's the most rapid mechanism amongst all the mechanisms. It operates through the vasomotor center. And what is vasomotor center? Uh, you, it has three components. Vasomotor center, vasoconstrictor fibers, and vasodilator fibers. These three components together make up the vasomotor system. Okay. Vasomotor center, it basically controls the heart rate, vasoconstrictor fibers causes the vasoconstrictions, vasodilator fibers causes the vasodilation of the blood supply of the blood vessels. Together, these three components uh, make up the vasomotor center, and vasomotor center is also known as the cardiovascular center present in the uh, lower part of the brain known as the medulla and uh, the pons so this vasomotor center also knowing as the cardiovascular center present in the medulla and pons of the brain okay so what's the mechanism basically it receives the impulses from the baroreceptor and chemoreceptors so first we study about the baroreceptor Okay, baroreceptors are basically the small nerve endings present uh, at the junction of uh, carotid artery and at the arch of aorta. So there, they senses whether uh, they senses the changes in the blood pressure. If there is the rise in the blood pressure, these are sensed by the uh, carotid bodies and the aortic bodies. And if there is the fall in the BP, that is also by sensed by these baroreceptors known as the carotid and aortic bodies. Okay. First, we see this uh, if there is a rise in the blood pressure, it uh, causes the activation of baroreceptor. I told you earlier that baroreceptor are present at the arch of aorta and uh, at the carotid arch of aorta and the junction of carotid artery so these causes the activation of these baroreceptors and then impulses these they send the impulses to the nucleus of tractus solitaris you don't need to memorize this nu- nucleus of tractus solitaris because it's the nucleus present in the medulla so from the nucleus of tractus solitaris acts on the vasomotor center vasomotor center present in the medulla and uh, this causes the inhibition of vasoconstrictor area it causes inhibition of vasoconstrictor area and conversely it excites the vasodilator area causing the reduced vasomotor tone right so there would be reduction in the peripheral resistance and there is a vaso when there is a vasodilation there would be fall in the bp and there is the vasodilation of the blood vessels there would be fall in the blood pressure and uh, there would be decreased BP so you can see the mechanism when there is 
vasoconstriction of the blood vessel there would be rise in the blood pressure when there is a vasodilation of the blood vessel there would be fall in the bp so these were receptors help uh, to regulate the blood pressure in either way if there is a rise it causes the decrease in the bp and if there is decrease in the bp it causes the rise in the bp <clears throat> okay another flow chart from which you can see when there is a, a blood pressure falls below the normal blood pressure below the normal so it causes decreased carotid sinus and aortic arch receptor potential as i have already told you that these are barrel receptor are basically the nerve endings present at the carotid sinus and the arch of aorta so decreases carotid sinus and arch of receptor potential there would be decreased rate of firing in the afferent nerves so there was that causes uh, the they send the impulses to the cardiovascular center then there would be increased sympathetic activity cardiac activity and there would be increased sympathetic vasoconstrictor nerve activity and decreased parasympathetic when there is increased parasympathetic sorry when there is increased sympathetic activity there would be definitely decrease in the parasympathetic nerve activity so that increase in the sympathetic activity finally cause increase in the heart rate increase in the stroke volume increase in the force of contraction of heart and arterial and venous vasoconstriction right so that increased cardiac output and the increased tpr causes the blood pressure to increase towards the normal right in your textbook you can see this diagram you can see this diagram when there is change in the blood pressure these blood pressure changes are sensed by the baroreceptors they send the signals to the cardiovascular center that is present in the pulmonary medulla you see right and then the cardiovascular center tells about that uh, there is that send the signals to the blood vessel if there is a vasoconstriction or a vasodilation right so signals are sent to the heart if there is increase in the blood pressure there would be vasoconstriction and uh, sorry if there is increase in the blood pressure there would be vasodilation and if there is decrease in the bp there would be vasoconstriction and the changes in the heart rate and the stroke volume and that will bring the blood pressure to the normal value okay there is another diagram there is another table chart in your book that can show you the effects of autonomic nervous system on the heart you can see here when there is sympathetic stimulation autonomic nervous system uh, means there there is the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nerve supply so when there is sympathetic stimulation you can see there is increased heart rate and increased cardiac is increased strength of cardiac contraction right and the blood vessel constrict but arteries that supply the skeletal muscle and the brain dilates this is the major effects of sympathetic stimulation and in parasympathetic stimulation when the parasympathetic stimulation is being activated there will be decrease in the heart rate there is decrease cardiac uh, strength of cardiac contraction and most blood supply do not have parasympathetic blood supply it's okay a very important point that most blood vessels do not have parasympathetic blood supplies you can see from this diagram this is also a diagram in your textbook again you can see from here in the brain in the brain stem the lower part of the brain in the medulla there is present the vasomotor center okay vasomotor centers also known as the cardiovascular center in the medulla right you can see the baroreceptors are the small nerve endings present at the in the carotid bodies and in the aortic arch you can see here in the diagram okay when the rise in the bp or decrease in the blood pressure is sensed by these bodies present in the carotid bodies and the aortic arch so the baroreceptor mechanism 
starts to regulate the blood pressure. You can see from this diagram as well, when there is decreased blood pressure, baroreceptor activity is decreased. It causes the increased sympathetic impulses, causing the increase in heart rate and increased force of cardiac contraction. And there would be increased sympathetic activity to the blood vessel, causing the vasoconstriction. And finally, the result would be increased BP. And conversely, you can see when the blood pressure is increased, there would be decreased baroreceptor activity. There is increased parasympathetic impulses. As you have earlier studied in your table chart, when there is increased parasympathetic activity, that causes a decreased heart rate, decreased force of cardiac contraction, and there would be decreased sympathetic activity, causing the vasodilation of the blood vessels. So that would bring the blood pressure towards the normal. So this is the whole mechanism I have explained to you. Well, that is baroreceptor reflex. Okay. The second mechanism is about the chemo chemoreceptor mechanism. Okay, these chemoreceptor mechanisms are being activated when these... Uh, they sense the change in the level of carbon dioxide and the oxygen level and in the pH. Okay, when there is decreased blood pressure, there is decreased flow of blood, there is decrease in oxygen and there is increase of carbon dioxide that causes the excitation of these chemoreceptors, send the impulses again to the vasoconstrictors and there would be blood pressure rises and blood flow increases. Okay. I'm explaining this chemoreceptor mechanism again. Chemoreceptors are the small nerve ending present uh, in the body that senses the change in the level of carbon dioxide and oxygen and pH. So when there is decreased blood pressure, that causes the decreased blood flow. So there would be decreased oxygen and increased carbon dioxide. And this decrease in oxygen and increase in carbon dioxide causes the excitation in the chemoreceptors as this is sensed by the chemoreceptors and these send the signals to the vasoconstrictor vasoconstrictor are present the vasomotor center also known as the cardiovascular center and that further causes the blood pressure to rise and the blood flow increases okay so we'll come to the Next uh, mechanism uh, which include the long-term regulation of uh, blood pressure. That long-term regulation of blood pressure involves the renal mechanism for the regulation of blood pressure. And that renal mechanisms, what is renal mechanism, you will uh, study it now. Okay, this long-term regulation of arterial PP, uh, Renal mechanism works even when the nervous mechanism adapts to the new pressure. Like, uh, agar aapka jo, jo nya jo blood pressure agar aapka rise hi rehta hai aur aapka jo uh, nervous mechanism hai us cheez ko adapt bhi kar gaya hai to ye renal mechanism tab bhi work out karega. So there are two ways of regulation of the blood pressure. These are very important points that there are two ways of the regulation of blood pressure. First one is by the regulation of uh, extracellular fluid volume and through the renin angiotensin mechanism very important the regulation of the blood pressure through the long term mechanism through the renal mechanism involves the two ways the first way by the regulation of regulating the regulation of electrocellular extracellular fluid volume and second through the renin angiotensin mechanism okay so you can see the, the first way by the regulation of ECF volume when there is increase in BP, there is excretion of water, pressure diuresis, right? There is excretion of water, diuresis mean uh, the increase in uh, urination. So that uh, means there is excretion of salt as well, that is pre pressure natriuresis. By this pressure natriuresis and pressure diuresis mean the excretion of the water and the excretion of salt causes the decrease in ECF volume. When there is decrease in ECF volume, extracellular fluid volume, there would be decrease in blood volume and ultimately 
the blood pressure will be restored very important point by the regulation of ecf volume when there is increase in blood pressure that causes the pressure diuresis and the pressure natriuresis diuresis means there is increase diuresis means there is excretion of water and natriuresis means there is excretion of salts and sodium through the urine so when there is excretion of water and salts through the urine so there will be decrease in ecf volume and there will decrease in blood volume ultimately the blood pressure is restored and conversely if there is decrease in bp okay the other condition if there is decrease in the bp that causes the reabsorption from the renal tubule reabsorption of the water and reabsorption of the salts from the t tubule okay so this causes increase in the ecf and blood volume it causes the when there is increased reabsorption from the renal tubules of the salt and water it causes increase in the extracellular fluid and blood volume and by causing increase in the electrocellular fluid extracellular fluid and blood volume in, there is increased cardiac output so that increased cardiac output Uh, maintain the blood pressure to the normal that causes rise in the blood pressure very important point the long term mechanism or the renal mechanism the for the regulation of the blood pressure is through the renin angiotensin mechanism this renin angiotensin mechanism what is this okay renin is a, a hormone a, renin is a substance that is released from the jg cells of the kidney and the angiotensinogen is released from the liver cell and there is ace angiotensin converting enzyme that is released from the lungs renin along with the angiotensin form the renin angiotensin system which is a hormone system that plays an important role in the maintenance of blood pressure okay this um, renin angiotensin mechanism is a very important mechanism i am again telling you that renin is present in the jg cells of the kidney angiotensinogen is uh, released from the liver cell and the as that is known ace angiotensinogen converting enzyme is released from the lungs renin along with the angiotensin form the renin angiotensin system it's a hormone system that plays important role in the maintenance of blood pressure okay how it actually works uh when there is the increase in the bp or there is increase in the bp or there is decrease in the bp and uh, that uh, blood pressure uh and that increase or decrease in the blood volume and the blood pressure is sensed by the kidney when that is blood is flow that blood is uh, flowed from the uh, renal tubules that renal uh, jg cells of the kidney secrete the renin okay and uh, we will study in this flow chart that how it works okay <clears throat> when there is decrease in the blood pressure okay that uh, causes the stimulation of the jg apparatus that causes the secretion of renin from the jg cells jg cells are the justa glomerular cells that renin released from the jg cells of the kidney act on the on the angiotensinogen angiotensinogen you have just studied is, is released from the liver cells and uh, renin acts on the process in which the angiotensinogen is converted to angiotensin 1 okay this conversion of angiotensinogen see here this conversion of angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1 is occurring in the blood and uh, that angiotensinogen conversion into angiotensin 1 and then the angiotensin 1 converts into angiotensin 2 
angiotensin 1 conversion in to angiotensin 2 involves the enzyme that is known as angiotensinogen converting enzyme ACE. You have studied here that ACE is released from the lungs. So the second process conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 occurs in the lung. Again, I am explaining the process that uh, the renin is released from the gesta glomerular cells of the kidney that acts on the process in which there is conversion of angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1 and that angiotensin 1 converts into angiotensin 2 and this conversion is uh, occurring because of the ACE enzyme. ACE, this conversion also takes place in the lung because the ACE is released from the lungs. ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme. Okay, and from angiotensin 2 that uh, further converts into 3 and then uh, 2, angiotensin 2 converts into 3 by the angiotensin en enzymes. So this angiotensin 2 has a very specific property of the vasoconstriction. Okay, that vasoconstriction causes the blood pressure to normal okay and the other property of this angiotensin that it acts on the adrenal cortex it acts on the adrenal cortex and it causes the release of aldosterone from the adrenal cortex and that aldosterone acts on the kidney and from the kidney it causes the reabsorption of water and the sodium when there is reabsorption of water and the sodium there is increase in the ACF volume and that increase in the vol ACF volume causes increase in the blood volume and finally that blood pressure became to normal or the, you can say the blood pressure is being re restored. Okay, this is the whole important mechanism uh, by which the blood pressure is being regulated. <clears throat> This is the very important mechanism. It's also known as the RAS mechanism, renin angiotensinogen system. Renin is released from the JG cell, just glomerular cells of the kidney. Angiotensinogen is present in the liver cells, okay, and ACE is present in the lung. This conversion of angiotensinogen to NC angiotensin 1 does not take place in the liver, but it takes place in the blood. And the conversion of angiotensin 2 to angiotensin 1, sorry, the conversion of angiotensin 1 to the con angiotensin 1 conversion to the angiotensin 2 is occurring in the liver, sorry, it, it occurring in the lung because the ACE is present in the lung. So this is the whole mechanism. I am explaining this RAS mechanism again. When there is decrease, when your blood pressure decrease, karta hai, there is the stimulation of gesta glomerular cell. From the gesta JG cells of the kidney, renin release. Hota hai. Renin act karta hai angiotensinogen. Pe, theek hai, jab aapki conversion angiotensinogen ki angiotensin 1 mein ho hoti hai. Aur ye conversion aapki blood mein ho hoti hai. So renin act on this process. And uh, angiotensin 1 converts to angiotensin 2 and ye 1 ki 2 mein conversion ACE enzyme ki wajah se hoti hai. And this ACE, ACE enzyme comes from the lungs and this process is also occurring in the lungs. Theek hai? Angiotensin has two important properties. Direct properties ki kya hai angiotensin 2 ki that it causes the vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction uh, khud ba khud the vasoconstriction hai wo blood pressure ko normal kar degi theek hai dusra iska important point ye hai ki angiotensin 2 act karta hai adrenal cortex pe wahan se aldosterone hormone ko release karata hai aldosterone hormone kidney pe act karta hai kidney pe act karne se wahan se reabsorption of water and sodium ki hoti hai that reabsorption of water and sodium causes the increase in the extracellular volume and that increase in ECA volume causes an increase in the blood volume so the blood pressure becomes normal or you can say the blood pressure is being restored so this is your 
topic for today so <clears throat> i hope you have uh, understand about uh, you have better understanding of this topic today's topic thank you so much